So I got a couple of uh, new um, things going on with the company. I want to put it out. Um, from the last meeting, I told you that uh, we're going to go for uh, IPO, right? Mm -hmm. And we started uh, a baby step towards it, OK? That's called the crowdfunding, OK? Let me tell you guys what crowdfunding is. Crowdfunding is a, a way of uh, collecting money from many different people. It could be $10, it could be $5. It could be a small amount of money and pull it together to purchase a large project. Okay, so we are going to start with the Las Vegas projects. Okay, so we're going to raise $5 million and investments will be broken down into minimum of $500. Okay, this is going to go through a SEC regulations, it's uh, stocks uh, controlling bureau, okay? So I'll go through uh, uh, heavy regulations with the uh, SEC's uh, uh, regulations and rules, and then we're gonna create a company that's gonna be collecting $500 from any investors who wants to purchase a portion of this portfolio of properties in Vegas, okay? We're looking to purchase about 100 single family to condo homes, uh, condo properties in Vegas. We're gonna put it on Airbnb and we expect to have about 15% return on every single uh, investor's uh, money while we own it. And while uh, we own it, there'll be 15% return, but when we sell it, now there is about 66% return. The reason how this is how it is broken down. We bought a property uh, on Burwood that's worth about, like I would say about $430,000, $440,000. That's worth $440,000, but we paid $310,000 to purchase it. And we spent a lot. Like This is a sample case, so I want to make it look good. I spent a little more than I uh, need to. I have a uh, miniature golf in the bag. I made a pool pla new plaster. I didn't have to do it because I was gonna put it on Airbnb, but then I wanted to do it and I spent about seventy thousand dollars. So we spent seventy thousand dollars purchase of three hundred ten thousand. The properties uh, we spent roughly about four hundred thousand dollars into it. So that's our cost, and it's worth about uh, four forty. Now, once the property jumps up in value in about two to three years, becomes around. Five hundred twenty, five hundred thirty thousand dollars worth. Then that's when we're gonna sell it. Okay. This property is worth. This property was worth five hundred fifty thousand dollars a year ago. It was uh, worth of five hundred fifty thousand dollars a year ago. So I'm expecting this property will go up to that property value in about two years, maximum three years. And when we have hundred thousand dollar gap between the sales price and our cost, and that's when we're gonna decide to sell. And that's going to give the investors about 60, 66% return on the sale. And while we own it, it will be about 15% return to the investor, which is still better than what, like, uh, I don't know, CDs or any um, uh, investment vehicles that you can see outside. So there's a dividend that's going to be given to the investors while they own it. And there is also gonna be a uh, payout when we sell it. Now, let me ask you guys, let me ask you guys this. I'm pretty sure there's many of you who are not investing in real estate, okay? And tell me why, what's the biggest hurdle of uh, owning a piece of real estate and renting it out and becoming a landlord? What's the biggest issue or the fear? What is it? Right at the moment for the LA markets, the price. Price? Yeah. I don't think the price is a problem because you're not paying cash for it. I think it's the, are you talking about the value dropping or is it too big of a? I'm talking about like, if I was to buy four units, it's gonna be a 1.4 and for me to get the loan would be what? 
So your fear is not having enough down payment, not necessarily the price, right? Okay. So you know, let's say on in LA, you got ten percent down. Even if you to go with the ten percent down, you have at least one hundred fifty thousand dollars in your pocket to own it. At least just own it. Okay. I'm not talking about the maintenance. Okay, just to own it. So more than likely, you're gonna to have to have like two hundred thousand dollars at least in your pocket, and that's not easy money to have for everyday Joe. Plus, even if you have to own it, let's say you had two hundred thousand dollars and you bought it, how much gonna cost you to upkeep it? What's the monthly mortgage? Let's say if you put in one hundred forty thousand dollars to purchase one point four million dollars, you put in one hundred forty thousand dollars. Of down payment, and let's say you're gonna have 1.3 million dollars in loan amount. How much is gonna cost you? About ten thousand dollars in monthly mortgage. Okay. So I mean, this is a big number. So you guys are being thrown off right now. Okay. So let me give you something that you can approach. Okay. I'm like million dollars, ten thousand dollars. You guys are like, I lost you. I know. I'm like, I'm. Your eyes are like, what? <laughs> So that's why they don't own property. Exactly. <laughs> that's one of the reasons. That's one of the reasons, okay? So let me tell you this. So let me be more approachable. Okay. Who's renting here? Okay. Everybody's renting? Okay. Lizzie, you're renting? Yeah. Are you paying? Yeah. Okay. Um, four people in your family? Uh, three. three. Okay. Is it one bedroom, two bedroom? It's a, that's an ADU in the back. ADU in the back. Mm -hmm. So probably like one bedroom? One bedroom, one bathroom. Yeah. And what city? Sanford Springs. Sanford Springs. So it's close by. Yeah. How much you paying? I'm guessing probably like 15? No. My mom owns the property. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> that's a bad example. <laughs> you probably paying like 500 bucks. You don't qualify. <laughs> Who else? Who else is renting? Okay. Clara, she's renting. How much are you paying? $2,400. Where? Fullerton. Is it a townhouse? It's an apartment. Apartment. One bed. One bed. Oh. Okay. <laughs> she's richer than I am. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let me tell you why you shouldn't buy a house. But before we go there, okay. let me explain. Let me break it down. Let, let me go there. Give me like five minutes. I'll go there and then I'll shatter your dream. $2,400, one bedroom. Okay. So is that better or is it better to own that? piece of real estate and pay mortgage. It's better to own it? Okay, let me tell you why it's not. Okay. One bedroom, Fullerton. How much do you think that will be, that specific unit that you're living in, if you were to purchase it? If it was for sale. What's the value of that unit that you're living in? If, I mean, oh, the real estate value around, but how big is the house? Uh, how big is the apartment? 780. 780. So one bedroom, 780, Fullerton, Mary Heights, probably a, what, 15 year old building. No, it's a new one. You want? Yeah, but I'm getting closer. Uh, closer to Anaheim, so I know it's a good area for you. I would say probably like low 400s, like $400,000. Mm -hmm. If you're to, if there was a condo. If you're buying it as a condo, then I would probably say like $400,000 and you're paying $2,600, okay? Now, let's do a minimum down payment, okay? 3% down, okay? So you have $12,000, closing costs, will probably cost you like $20,000 to $30,000 to own the building. Now, it's almost 100% loan, right? So $400,000 mortgage payment, $2,800 plus taxes, which is $3,200. HOA, probably like $300. Insurance. 
$3,500 insurance, probably 100 bucks. You're looking at about $3,600 in monthly payment. And you're paying for the same house and you're paying $2,600. So who's smarter, your landlord or you? You're smarter because you're paying $1,000 less to use that property. <laughs> Have you ever thought of that way? No equity, but she has no equity if she's buying 3% down. Now, the equity has to go up. You're betting on your equity going up. What if it goes down like it happened last year? Azusa? Azusa is they destroyed. See, you can't never bet on something that goes up. It could come down. But here's another problem with the real estate investing. Do you know how much it is to much it is to close on a property closing cost wise when you buy? How much is the extra that you're gonna pay that just disappears as soon as you buy? About three percent just disappears. Why? Because escrow fees that goes to Judy. <laughs> it goes to shares, it goes to real estate fees, it goes to taxes and whatnot. Three percent out the door. Okay? You don't even get to see that ever again. Fees, done. And that's already what? $10,000 to $20,000 spent to own it, and that's not going towards your equity. Okay? Spent about $20,000. And how much is it to sell a property? Do you know how much it costs you when you sell it? About 7%. Realtor fees, that's about 4 to 5%. Closing cost, 2%. So right there and then, you buy and sell. Let's say you buy, buy at 400000 and sell for 400000 tomorrow. You're losing $40,000. Just buy, selling at the price you just bought yesterday, you're going to lose $40,000, which is 10%. So even if your property value goes up by 10%, you're breaking even. So you're betting your money on your property value going up. On top of that, has to go up. Can't go down, can't be the same. It can't go 10% up either. 10% plus up is what you're betting on. And you still want to buy a house? Now, I just talked about buying and selling and fees only and whether property is going up and down. What about the time that you own it? You're living in a property, right? Let's say you're paying $2,600 now. Versus if you own it, you're going to pay $3,600. Yeah, you have a tax bracket. I mean, tax benefits. You have uh, what? Um, the principal is going down. You have a pride of ownership. That's fine. But all that benefit doesn't add up to be $1,000 a month. Okay? Hmm? Yeah, you have it. But do you have it? Not yet. It's owned by the bank. You got 97% loan. Who do you think the owner is? You're not the owner. Yeah, your name is on it. You're a 3% owner, luckily. But then when you sell it, you're going to pay 5% in fees and 2% in closing costs. You're going to be negative. Look. Look here. I'm here to try to shatter your, this cloudy idea about real estate. Okay, you're thinking that you're buying a house, owning it for 30 years, pay off, or you're going to live there forever, you're going to have kids grow, go to school, this and that. Guess what? You're going to live poor for the rest of your life because you just raised your liability by $1,000 a month. Where is that $1,000 coming from? Extra $1,000. Where is that coming from? You're going to have to get a high job and <laughs> The weekend, or you're gonna have to cut out your outing with your husband. You're gonna have to cut out your what? Whatever the activities you wanna do, you have to somehow source that extra thousand dollars by owning a house. Where is that coming from? Is your mom gonna pay for it? I hope so. Right. So owning a piece of real estate is actually you're creating a, creating a liability. Do you understand that? You own it, 
You pay $3,600, who's paying for it? You are. You are paying for that $3,600. You can't even move. If you're renting it, you can move tomorrow. But if you're buying, you just, if you bought it, you can't move. You're stuck there. And if you want to move, you're going to pay 10% in fees. Right? And you want to commit to that? You see? Owning a piece of real estate, you have to really think about it. Okay? It's not really owning it. Is that what makes you happy? Go for it. If you, are, if you want to drive a Ferrari, go for it. It's your money, not my money. Oh, in this case, it's my money. Um, so what I'm trying to get at is this. If you're working to pay for that mortgage, you're just creating a liability. You need to own a piece of real estate that your tenant pays for the mortgage. Do you get it? Tenant works 40 hours a week and pay for that mortgage and your, your property value is appreciating, that's real estate investment. Do you get it? If you're working 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week, side job, Uber, put that money in, you turn around, give it to the bank, now repeat. This will go on for 30, 40, 50 years until you die. You feeding the bank for the rest of your life. Did you think about that? You think you own the, you think you own the house? No, you don't. Until it's paid off. Even if it's paid off. If it's paid off, who do you still have to pay? Government. Government, taxes, property taxes. You still have to pay them? You don't ever own a piece of real estate. You have the right to use it. But while you use it, Who's paying for it? Are you paying for it? Or is your tenant paying for it? If your tenant is paying for it, are you cash flowing? What I mean by cash flowing is this. Close house that she's living in. She has a landlord. Okay? The landlord, if she, I'm, I'm hoping that she paid all cash for it. Okay? So she has at least some money coming in. Because after, she has to pay property tax. The landlord, she has to pay for the HOA, she has to pay for insurance, and there's a little maintenance here and there, plus there's going to be a vacancy. As a tenant, you don't think about the vacancy, right? Because you go in, you come out, that's it. But no, as a landlord, there's a vacancy. Before you come in, there was a vacant period. Who was paying for that time? No one. The landlord was. All right? So after all this, your landlord is going to have to take home 1500 bucks, even if you pay, if she paid all cash for it. Is that a wise investment? Yeah, maybe, if you have a lot of money. But here's the thing. Not too many of you have enough money to just put it to sleep for 30 years or 10 years and collect 1000 bucks each from each, uh, each property, if that's fine with you, that's fine by me too. But not too, not too many people have that kind of luxury. If you did, I don't think you'll be working here. So to get it is this. There's a, a lot of hurdles to get to the goal that you have, which is becoming a landlord in real estate. I want to bring down the hurdle slightly which is by putting the money together. Like X said, he wants, to own, he wants to own a piece of real estate, four unit property in LA. It's gonna cost him $200,000 out of his pocket. The money is a problem, but maintaining is also a problem. The tenant is a problem. What if he doesn't pay on time? What if, you, uh, what if the tenant uh, brings on a dog? What if the tenant all of a sudden gives a birth? What if the tenant brings in a, uh, neighbors and throws a party? This is ongoing business. It's a problem. You think you just own a piece of real estate and you're going to be rich? No. There's a maintenance. It's a business. And unless you have this vehicle, you know that you're not getting out of the daily route of red race. Okay? It's called red race. You're just going in circles. Okay? 
you're not getting anywhere out of your way you are. Maybe you'll make, I don't know, $400 more a month. Maybe you'll make $500 more a month, $1,000 more a month. Is that going to change your life? It wouldn't. How do you get out of this red race? You have to have a piece of real estate. But like I said, owning a piece of real estate and you live in it, it's liability because you're paying for it. Of course, that used to be a good time and plan when the property values were $20,000. Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay? So you have to think real carefully. Un understand there's a lot of you who are investing in stocks. Okay? You're expecting the, pop, the company values to go up and make you rich. I hope so. I really hope so. Oh, you, you could tell? <laughs> Here's the thing. The reason why I'm starting this uh, Las Vegas project and Dallas project is this. You could invest $500 and become an owner of this 100 of property put together, portfolio's owner. And what do you have to do about that? Nothing. 